Hallelujah. You have won the victory. You have won the victory. Mighty God you are. Hallelujah. You want it all. You have won it all for me. Death cannot hold you down. You are the risen king. You are the risen king. Seen it. Seen it in majesty. You are the risen King. Come on and sing it to him, church. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. You have won the victory. I love you with everything in me, Lord. Hallelujah. Listen, just lift your hands to heaven and open your mouth and praise Him. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We give you praise. We magnify you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. Rabba Shatamandala Bokosaya. Yem Rabba Bakasa. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Glory to God. We love you, Master. It's here, the book we've been waiting for, Seven Ways the Holy Spirit Speaks to Us, a complete guide to hearing God. Pastor Sean Pinner gives readers life-changing keys on exploring, understanding, and experiencing the voice of God, which every believer can hear on a daily basis. Packed with powerful revelations, this book shares the methods, means, and motivations for the voice of God and provide answers to questions like how to hear God, recognize His voice, tap into His guidance, and much more. Receive confidence on hearing God through the Word, dreams and visions, divine impressions, and more. And discover a much deeper and more intimate walk with the Lord. Order Seven Ways the Holy Spirit Speaks Today, available on Amazon and all major book suppliers. Your journey into the powerful realms of God's voice starts here. Pastor Sean Pinner invites you to two special meetings at Farmington, New Mexico. Get ready to be empowered with the preaching of the gospel and witness the miraculous healing power of God at the Journey Church, February 9, 2020 at 10 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. For more information, call 505-320-9190. See you there. Father, bless your people on this morning as we get ready to go into the Word of God. Help us to grasp on to what you are saying. Speak to us. Show us the power that is released when we apply ourselves to the discipline of fasting and the Word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say a good amen right there. Praise God. So on this morning, we are talking about the power of fasting. We notice Mordecai broke out into the fast. He started the whole thing. When he put on sackcloth and ashes, he was refusing to be comforted. And notice when, because I, and he was stirred on by the Holy Ghost. It may not say that, but he certainly was. The grace of God was on his life. And when he sent that message to Esther, to provoke her and tell her who knows whether you have been positioned to the kingdom for such a time as this. That same anointing and that same urgency that was felt by Mordecai was passed on to Esther. And Esther said, tell everybody, fast three days and three nights. Jesus said it like this in Matthew chapter 6. Jesus said, when you fast in secret, don't do it to be seen of men. Jesus said, your father who sees you fasting in secret will reward you openly. So there are rewards for fasting, turning that plate upside down and 
seeking God, pressing into him. Remember when the apostles could not cast the demon possessed cast the demons out of the demon possessed boy jesus told his disciples after he cast the devils out of the young boy and set him free and heal him the disciples came in privately and said why could not we cast them out jesus said because this kind can only come out this kind can only come out by prayer and fasting so in certain situations Prayer alone is not enough. Sometimes you have to combine prayer with fasting. Why, Pastor Sean? Simple, because God said so. It's that simple. I think we complicate these things when we overanalyze it. It's that simple. It's just obedience. What does fasting do? Fasting subdues the flesh. Fasting helps you to become more focused on the things of God and more sensitive to the Holy Ghost. Are you listening to me? It positions you to hear from God and be sensitive to the workings and the movings of God. Are you hearing me? And so Esther those call for a three day. I mean, in, the, in Africa, they call this a dry fast. A dry fast. No food, no water. I'm not telling you to do a dry fast. If the Holy Spirit calls you on a fast, that's between you and your health physician. Talk to them about what can you do, whether you can miss a meal or something. I understand some people are on medication, and it's you, you, you better obey your doctor. Come on here, talk to me. But, but I'm just saying, so this is a winning strategy, and Estados applied themselves, they prayed and added fasting into the mix. Isaiah said, is not this the fast that I have chosen to break the bands of wickedness and to undo heavy burdens and let the oppressed go free? My God, my God. Glory to God. So the Bible says in Esther chapter 5 verse 1, on the third day of the fast, my God, she said, we're going to fast and see God for three days. And after that, I'm going to the king. So on, on the third day of the fast, Esther put on her royal robes and entered the inner court of the palace just across from the king's hall. Remember, the king didn't send for her. This was what you call taking a, uh, this, is, this ain't a step, this is a leap of faith. <laughs> Hello? Man, because if he don't want to see her, in five minutes she's in the grave. But this woman's got her faith in God. Come on, ladies. Shout at me this morning. You got your faith and your confidence in God. Glory to God. My God. So, come on, man. I ain't leaving you all either now. I know you got your faith in God too. So the Bible says she entered into the court just across from the king's hall. The king was sitting on his royal throne facing the entrance. When he saw Esther standing in the inner court, he had a decision to make, should I execute her? But he didn't because they, these people just finished fasting. The Bible says the heart of the king is in the hands of God as the rivers of water. He can turn it however he will. And God did this thing because when he saw Esther, he welcomed her and held out the golden scepter to her. So Esther approached and touched the end of the scepter. That means you are accepted. The favor is, this is God at work. This is God. It wasn't no yea, thus said the Lord. This is just raw faith in action. They fasted. They know God hears and answers prayer when you fast. They applied themselves, and then she took a leap of faith. My God, my God. Then the king asked her, what do you want, Queen Esther? What is your request? I will give it to you even if it is half of the kingdom. Hey, Kanalabosa. No wonder Jesus said, Fear not, little flock. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Whatsoever you ask in my name, my God, my God. Jesus said, I will do it. Hey, glory to God. I'm getting happy. I love the word, y'all. Now, watch this. Watch this. What would make him say that she's going to ask him to stop the evil plot of Haman? And the king didn't give, give her a chance to talk. He said, whatever you want, I'll give it to you. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. I said, Lord, have mercy. This is God at work. And Esther replied, 
See, you can be quick to throw your requests out sometimes. There's timing in the things of God. There is a time to ask for big favors. Are you hearing me? Some of you are too quick. You got to give God a chance to work. Season that, soak that thing in prayer and fasting before you just jump out and ask. Listen. And Esther replied, If it please the king, let the king and Haman come today to a banquet I have prepared for the king. She's showing her husband honor. Man, she's sweetening up this man. Ha <laughs> ha! Them women know how to get what they want. <laughs> Some of you ladies are laughing right now. Esther, Esther going to wine and dine him. <laughs> it's all right. I'm just happy about the things of God. But, but, but she's applying herself. She's using the principle of honor. She's showing honor to the king. <laughs> she said, come, I, I got a banquet ready. I, I know how to spread a table. Glory to God. Verse four. And Esther replied, if it please the king, let the king and Haman Come today to a banquet I prepared for the king. The Bible says if your enemy is hungry, feed him. Oh, Esther setting this man right up. This woman being led by the Holy Ghost. Watch this. The king turned to his attendants and said, Tell Haman to come quickly. Come on, quick. Come quick. Don't delay. My, my wife ain't playing here. She spread me a table. You get over here quick. Tell Haman to come quickly to a banquet as Esther had requested. So the king and Haman went to Esther's banquet. Oh, little that old wicked Haman, he didn't know what he was getting himself into. He might as well enjoy this meal because he only had one more good meal coming after this and he going to get wiped out of here. This is what the Holy Ghost will do with you. You better, to God say, touch not my anointed and do my prophets No, God will get you, man. Now watch this. And while they were drinking wine, the king said to Esther, now tell me what you really want. What is your request? He might tell you his belly full. What is your request? I will give it to you even if it is half the kingdom. Haman knows nothing. He doesn't even know. Esther the queen is a Jew. Man, you better not mess around with God's people. This is Abraham's seed. Are you hearing me? God is committed. Glory to God. Watch this. Esther, required. Esther replied, this is my request. And deepest wish. Boy, she gonna wine and dine it. A woman, son. <laughs> a godly woman. She knows what she is doing. If I have found favor with the king, and if it pleases the king to grant my request and do what I ask, please come with Haman again tomorrow to the banquet I will prepare for you. Then I will then I will explain what this is all about this woman this is the hand of God directing this woman giving her wisdom giving her knowledge giving her understanding helping her to understand God's timing and at the right time she's gonna present the big question to the king I can't wait to get into the rest of this tomorrow. Isn't the word of God exciting? You got to be wise. You know, some people want to just run out and ask. And then they want to get upset when nothing happens. But before this woman asked, she fasted and she prayed. She had a bunch of people fasting and praying with her. They were soaking this request in prayer and putting it in, putting it before God. Call unto me, Jeremiah 33, verse 3, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you know not. The power of fasting. Glory to God. The anthem. A hallelujah. You have won. You have won the victory. I surrender all. Listen, you know, I just feel compelled to make this call. Because some of you under the sound of my voice, you are enjoying the word of God. But you have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus. The most important thing on this side of heaven is to make a clean break with sin and give your life to Jesus. And I, I know you can't break from sin on your own. When you come to Jesus as you are, 
He will deliver you. He will forgive you. The Bible says if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He loves you so much. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved without any further hesitation i want you to pray with me right now say lord jesus i believe you are the son of god i believe you are the son of god i believe you died on calvary cross for me i believe you died and they buried you in a borrowed tomb but on the third day, God raised you from the dead. Jesus, I'm asking you to forgive me of all of my sins. Wash me in your blood. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. Thank you, Lord, for hearing my prayer, forgiving my sins, washing me in your blood, and writing my name in the Lamb's book of life friend if you prayed that prayer your sins are forgiven if you prayed that prayer your sins have been forgiven welcome into the kingdom of God that's coming from me and my lovely wife pastor Amy we say it to you again welcome into the kingdom of God this is the most important decision you can make on this side of heaven is to surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ because only what is done for Christ will last it is appointed unto man once to die and after death we are going to have to face God what you do now it does matter Jesus loves you he cares about you your life will never it will never be the same again what a mighty God we serve and remember to join us again on tomorrow as we talk about trouble don't last always as we continue our series in the book of Esther you can see God weaving and working his plans out I want to give you an opportunity right now to sow a seed into the kingdom of God to support the work of the ministry and the preaching of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. To do so, visit us online right now, seanpinder.net forward slash give, seanpinder.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash seanpinderministries. paypal.me forward slash seanpinderministries. You can also give through the ministry Zell account. Our Zell account email address is info at seanpinder.net. Info at seanpinder.net. You can also give through the ministry cash app account. That address is the dollar sign, Sean Pinder Ministries. The dollar sign, Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give by mailing your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 2726, McKinney, Texas, 75070. Never forget, me and my lovely wife, Pastor Amy, we love all of you so much. We appreciate you. We don't take you for granted. We love you. God bless you. Take care now. Bye-bye.